Server traveling is actually quite easy to set up, yet many people are having issues with it. That's because they want to use a seamless travel method, which requires a bit more setup to be done. First of all, I will need a new playable level to which everyone will be sent with server travel, and rearrange its environment a bit. A non-seamless server travel can be easily done in any blueprint, you just have to make sure the command is run by the server. I'll be calling it in my game mode GM tag at the end of the round to travel to the next level instead of going to the main menu. Make a new custom event called travel2 with a string input parameter for the name of the next level. To it, connect execute console command, where the server travel command will be stitched together using an append node. The first part of the hole is the server travel command with a space at the end. Second is the name of the target level from the event's next level name input parameter. What's left is to call the travel to event, fill in the target level's name and test it out. Two seconds after timer hit zero, it should start loading the new level and after a few more seconds also send all the players there. There is a much better way of doing this though, and that's using a seamless travel option that can be enabled in the game mode that's calling the server travel command. But this isn't going to work yet, and that's because we're missing a transition level, which is a temporary level where all players will be sent to while loading the target level. This is especially useful when you're traveling between two large levels, releasing the old one from the memory first and then loading the second one in while waiting in the transition level. To set it up, go to Project Settings, Maps and Modes and select your transition map. Seamless Travel also won't work if we run two regular editor windows for playtesting and can only be done in standalone. So set number of players to 2 and launch the game in standalone from the main multiplayer menu. Now, it did move all players to the next level, but they haven't spawned yet. Let's take a closer look at the spawn logic in the game mode GM tag. In it, we're using on post login event but this one fires only when a new player joins the session with his player controller. Because of that, we'll be switching to the handle starting new player event, which gets called when a new player joins even on server travel. Let's fix a few more bugs that we have here. The first one is that we aren't immobilized at the start of a new round. Things get a little bit weird here, because unless you're making a local multiplayer game, you shouldn't have problems with getPlayerController function, since there's only one player at index 0 locally. Take a closer look at its usage from previous tutorials in the third person character blueprint at begin play. Server for some reason, right after server travel, returns not his player controller, but the clients using that function. A workaround for this is to use getController function then cast to the player controller and use the casted object to disable input for the player character. Then we must get rid of that win-lose widget from the first level that persists during server travel. To fix it, we must use the remove all widgets function, which solves the problem on the client, but now the server doesn't have his UI. Remove all widgets targets the local player and the server executes it for himself first. But then the client joins and the server runs the function at begin play on the client's player controller again, making him remove his UI twice. Instead, we'll need a new custom event, I called it clear screen, that's set to run on owning client and reliable as well. If the server now calls this event, it will remove all widgets on the controller's owner screen only. Lastly, sometimes players' cameras aren't aligned with the direction the characters are facing. 
This means we have to manually set control rotation to the controlled pawn's rotation, since control rotation is what's rotating the camera. And that's it. I hope server travel won't bother you as much anymore, and see you in the next video.